Welcome back. The Time Warner AT&T deal approved without conditions yesterday. The acquisition now can move forward, and the decision has major implications for the media business and further M&A. Joining us right now is EY, U.S. Chairman and Managing Partner-Elect, Kelly Greer. Good to see you, Kelly. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Maria. It's great to be here. So what do you think about this? Everybody was watching this in the business yesterday, in the industry. We were all focused on what the judge would say about AT&T and Time Warner. Obviously, he sided with AT&T. What does this mean for further deal making in your yeah, view? Yeah, absolutely, and and it uh, it is big news and it's exciting news and and uh, it, I, I can't specifically talk about the transaction itself because of the the client relationships that we have, but um, but it is I think emblematic of a, a significant shift that we're seeing in the marketplace in terms of. Uh, in terms of the vertical vertical integration that's that's uh, implicit in the deal, but more broadly, just in terms of, of um, sector convergence and a really really robust deal market. You know, we're seeing the first five months of uh, 2018 having record levels of M and A activity. We've seen a, a, nearly a trillion dollars of net M and A activity through the first five months, which is 80 percent higher than last year at this time. The month of April had. $245 billion worth of M&A activity, and uh, that was uh, a, a record level um, in, the, in the last, you know, in the last 10 years, and actually the last time we saw deal activity at that level was 20, uh, 2007, so it's, it's a significant um, and, and very hot deal market right now, and I think, mm -hmm. I think well, there's, the, a lot of uh, there's a lot of cash out there, John. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, do, do these vertical deals tend to work? You know, what I think about the last big deal that Time Warner was involved in with AOL, where you had a content uh, provider and a pipes company getting together, and that was a disaster. What, what do you think about these kind of vertical integrations? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think increasingly, you know, businesses are finding the need to, to uh, you know, really transform themselves in light of the pace of change. The, comp uh, the competitive landscape is changing for, for the likes of, uh, of an AT&T and Time Warner. And increasingly, they're com they're competing with not just the telcos or, or the media companies, but in fact, more the the Googles and the Facebooks and the Apples of the world. And I think, I think it's increasingly an important part of evolving their business models yeah. to to remain competitive in a very dynamic environment. And, and when you have uh, Bob Nardelli, when you have you know Netflix willing to pony up eight billion dollars yes. on original content, yeah. that's that's real competition. So yeah. content, once again. The valuations go higher. Yeah, as we said earlier, you know, content is becoming king, and you obviously have to have the cash to to do that to participate or compete. But uh, there's no question about it. Kelly, congratulations on uh, on your promotion. You know, you're stepping into uh, to lead a firm as the chairman, managing partner of the Americas. Tremendously successful, tremendously professional. What's uh, what's on your agenda in taking over? Thank you, Bob. And uh, it really is such an exciting time. I, I couldn't be more honored and more excited to be able to step in and, and chair the U.S. and the Americas for EY. Uh, it is an incredibly exciting time, not just for the firm, but for the profession. Tremendous amount of change. Of course, there's always a lot of change, but the pace of change that we're experiencing is truly unprecedented. And it affects all aspects of our business. It certainly affects all aspects of our clients' business. And, uh, you know, it, it's creating an entirely different workforce um, for us within the profession. You know, increasingly, we have, uh, we have a need for uh, really digital native and technology native uh, skills within the broader um, tax and ac accounting, auditing, IT uh, skill set that, that we've been traditionally bringing to the market. And it's, it's, uh, so it's an incredibly exciting time for us to be able to bring all of that to bear in supporting our clients' business transformation. Yeah. We're also very focused on transforming the way that we deliver our own services. You know, increasingly, we are relying on uh, emerging technologies, you know, blockchain, artificial intelligence, digital and data analytic capabilities are really at the heart of the way that we are delivering our services. And, uh, and you know, at, this, at the center of all of that is, is our audit business, which remains incredibly incredibly important yeah. to the capital markets, to the confidence of those capital markets. And so all around, you know, especially it's June and, and we've got a lot of college graduates and many of them will be joining EY and joining the profession. I think it's an incredibly exciting time. It, it really is. And with the audit business, you've been busy because of the tax cut package, right? No I mean, question companies about it. want to know what, what the best treatment is for them given the new, the new law. Absolutely. And it's obviously an extraordinarily complicated and comprehensive body of law and encompasses many 
many different dimensions of tax uh, tax law, different different aspects of domestic, of state and local, and certainly international tax provisions that are changing as a result of of uh, tax reform. And you know, to be quite honest, there's still a lot of guidance that companies are relying on or are awaiting in order to determine what the true implications are. And obviously, that's keeping our people incredibly busy. Yeah. You talk about college graduates. We have a new generation coming into the workforce, Generation Z. It's not the millennials. Have you looked at that? How, how is this new generation that's coming up different from the millennials that preceded it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the, I can still try to figure out the millennials. Yeah. <laughs> How do you want us to figure out the Z generation? Z. <laughs> well, it, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's an interesting question, and you know, every every year EY recruits somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand people. Yeah, you know, with and, and and most of them are actually off campus, and so we are in a constant state of inculcating the next generation of uh, of, of workforce, and I, you know, I think. Uh, we're very encouraged and very excited about about the folks that we're bringing in from um, from campus. They're helping us transform the business, as I described earlier. Yeah. I think that you know they've got a, just a totally different level of conversancy with technology, with digital That's capability, mm -hmm. and uh, and and they you know they have a level of courage and and uh, sort of boldness in the way that they approach you know their careers, which which I think is actually quite productive. It is productive, and it's nice to see the diversity. Kelly, congratulations to you. Thank you Thank so much you. for joining us. And and with your move, three of the top four accounting firms are run by women. How do you like that? Good that stuff. is true. Yeah. Indeed. First Kelly time thing. for EY. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. We'll be watching. Kelly Greer joining us there.